So in this unit on optics, we've been looking at different um, objects, you know, mirrors and uh, lenses of different kinds and how they take advantage of the refraction or bending of light or reflection and how light reflects off of objects uh, to be able to do things and create images uh, that can be advantageous. So many of you are wearing glasses that take advantage of this and um, often we use uh, mirrors that you saw in the activity last week. Uh, that have different properties to do different things to the image, to make it either larger or smaller, inverted, uh, to either increase your field of vision or uh, increase the detail that you can see. And so today we're going to talk about ray diagrams, which are a tool that will allow us to predict what the image is going to look like depending on what uh, apparatus we're using. And so i just give you a definition here of a ray diagram. It's a visual representation of three of the infinite light rays of light leaving an object in order to determine the characteristics of an image. And so what I mean here is, you know, uh, like we talked about last time, if you see something, then there are tons of light rays uh, reflecting off of that image, and some of them are reaching your eye, and that forms the image in your eye. And so to predict what kind of image and where that image is, uh, we can take just a few of those rays and uh, kind of trace their path and pinpoint uh, where other rays would would follow as well. And so uh, we talk about principal rays, and there's three principal rays that we're going to be uh, tracing in our ray diagrams today. And I just refer to them as parallel in, parallel out, and then what I call the center. And I put center in quotes because center uh, has a little bit of a different definition depending on whether we're talking about a lens or a mirror, uh, but you'll see as we get into examples what I mean there. All right, so uh, let's start off with uh, a biconvex lens, right? A biconvex lens, as you saw before, means that there are two surfaces that are curved out in each direction. Uh, most common uh, example, of course, is a simple magnifying glass uh, where the glass curves out on both sides. And because it is a, a lens, it's uh, made up of a material that has a different uh, index of refraction or different speed of light in it, which will cause the light to bend as it hits a, a curved or a angled surface. And then, uh, as we saw last time, uh, convex means it's going to cause the light, uh, rays to converge to reach at a certain point uh, that we call the focal point. And for this particular lens, uh, I'm saying that the focal length is three centimeters. In other words, those rays will come together uh, to a point uh, three centimeters away from the lens itself. And because it's biconvex, it's made up of two curved surfaces, and so there's actually two focal points. Uh, if the light traveling from the left side uh, travels through uh, the lens, it will converge on a point to the right, uh, which I've labeled F prime. And if the light were to travel from the left, uh, from the right to left, it would converge through the focal point that I've labeled on the left. And you'll see why uh, it's uh, helpful to have both of those drawn. All right, so uh, let's locate uh, where your eye is going to be. Uh, so since this is a lens, I'm going to place all the objects and all these diagrams on the left. Since this is a lens, the light's going to travel from the object through the lens to your eye. And so we're going to place your eye on the right side of the screen here. So let's place your first object here. And this is an object outside the focal length. This is if you're standing, or the object you're looking at is a pretty decent distance away from the lens itself. And you may have done this with a magnifying glass. You may have looked at an object um, with the magnifying glass far from the surface of, of the paper. And uh, we're, we're going to find out why you see what you see when you do this. And so with an object outside the focal length, uh, see I've drawn it quite a bit of a distance away from the lens, now let's draw those three principal rays. So a light, again, is leaving this object in all different directions. One of those light rays travels, uh, remember I call it parallel in. So notice how it's parallel to this uh, dashed line that represents kind of a, a straight line through the lens. And it's going to hit the lens. Now, which direction will this uh, light bend? Uh, again, look back at the uh, video on convex uh, converging lenses if you need to review. but uh, because of refraction uh, and because of the way the surface is bent, it's going to converge. It's going to bend down towards the focal length, and so it goes this direction. 
And so I draw a line that's parallel to the principal axis, and then when it hits the lens, it turns and goes through F prime. So what was our second uh, principal uh, ray? It was parallel out. Well, the question is, uh, what light ray leaving that object would end up traveling parallel on the right side of the lens? Well, that would be one that passes through the focal point on the left. Um, let me finish it up and then I'll maybe explain if that doesn't quite make 100% sense to you. Uh, but that means it then travels out parallel to the right. Now, why is that? Well, I use, I uh, made up something a long time ago called the trucker's maxim. And the trucker's maxim is, is silly. You weren't going to find it in any textbooks. But it, it basically says this. Uh, if you're ever behind a semi-truck, you'll see that they'll have a bumper sticker oftentimes that says, if you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you. Well, why do they have that? Well, because they want you to make sure that you're not so close to the truck that they can't see you. And so uh, the reason I apply it here, though, is it, in, from, for my purposes, it means that all rays of light are reversible. And so this last light, uh, line that I drew, picture it going backwards. If you're on the right side and the light traveled parallel into the lens, how would it bend? It would bend and go up through the focal point on the left. And so we can basically draw that ray backwards. We can go through the focal point on the left, and then as it hits the lens, it's going to bend in such a way that it ends up going parallel when it reaches the right side. So if uh, you have questions on that, just uh, shoot me a text or email or remind, and, and I'll clear that up for you, hopefully. Uh, but for now, uh, that's how we're going to draw. We're going to draw through the focal point, and it's going to end up coming parallel out. And then the third principal ray, which you can see we don't really need it, but it's going to help us uh, make sure that we've located the image in the right place, is what we call center. And if you pass through the center of a lens, then you're going to hit it straight on, and so any bend to the right is going to be countered by a bend to the left as you go through the other side of the lens. And so you end up going in a straight line. And so I'm going to draw that ray that goes through the center as traveling in a straight line. And notice how all three of these rays that I drew intersect at a certain point. That point where they intersect is where the image is going to be located. And notice I drew all my arrows, or all my light rays, from the head of the arrow. And so what will be at that intersection is the head of the arrow. And so that's why uh, the base is on the line, and so it's going to be upside down. And so for a biconvex lens, uh, when the object is outside the focal length, uh, we're going to get this kind of image. And then there's three descriptors that we're going to use to describe this image. We're going to talk about uh, its size, we're going to talk about its orientation, and we're going to talk about uh, whether it's uh, real or not. So this particular image, you can see it's not real uh, small, but it is slightly reduced in size, so we call that reduced. Uh, it's not upright, but it is inverted, it's upside down. And then the third the descriptor we're going to use is whether it's what we call real or virtual. And the simple way around this is uh, a real image occurs when the light rays actually pass through the point where we see the image. The point where all three of these uh, rays intersect, they're, the lights re light rays really did pass through those points, and so this is a real image. And of course, the shortcut when you do a re uh, ray diagram is those solid lines show that that was the actual path of the light, and so we know that that's a real image. All right, so, and like I said, if you hold up a magnifying glass and you hold it far away from the surface of the paper, you'll notice that you see that the letters are tiny and they're upside down, uh, rather than what you would expect looking at it through the magnifying glass, and this is why. All right, so let's look at how you normally use a, a magnifying glass. So I've drawn a biconvex lens uh, diagram again, once again, since it has two surfaces, it has two focal lengths, and I'm going to put the image this time. Uh, your eyes on the right because the light's going to go through the lens. This time I'm going to put the object inside the focal length. And again, this is how you normally use a magnifying glass, right? You hold it up close to the object that you're trying to look at. And so let's see why you end up seeing what you do. The first ray is going to be parallel in, right? So I'm going to go parallel from the tip of the arrow to the lens. And then what happens to that? It bends and goes down through the focal point on the other side. The second 
principal ray is a little trickier this time because we know we want it to be parallel out on the right side. And so last time we passed through the focal point on the left. But notice if we go through the focal point on the left this time, we're not gonna pass through the lens. And so we have to kind of backtrack and act like we came from the focal point and go up to the lens in a line that lines up with the focal point. That way when we bend, we'll bend out parallel. And again, it helps if you think of the reversible nature of the rays. If you were to come in parallel from the right and hit that lens, you would bend down in a direction that would aim towards the focal length on the uh, focal point on the left. And then, of course, the third one again is the center. Uh, if you pass through the center of the lens, you'd go straight through without changing. Now, notice we got a problem this time. Uh, we've drawn our three rays, and they're not intersecting anywhere. And so the question is, well, what happens? Um, if the rays don't intersect, then do we see anything? And the answer is yes, because you'll recall uh, when we talked about plane mirrors, our brain is great at taking shortcuts and making assumptions. And one of the assumptions our brain makes is that the light rays that it's seeing passed in a sh or traveled in a straight line. And so what our brain does is it projects backwards those rays that it's seeing. So this ray, it thinks, came from there. The second ray, it thinks, came from there. And the third ray looks like it came from there. Do those three rays look like they came from the same place? The answer is yes. They do look like they came from an intersection, and that is right here. And so that's where the image is. And notice the characteristics of the image. It's enlarged, right? it's magnified, it's made larger. It's upright this time, and again, if you look at something through a magnifying glass, uh, you're not reading the words upside down when they're larger. And then notice that uh, third one, is it real or what we call virtual? In this case, did the light rays actually pass through where the uh, image appears to be? And the answer is no. Our brain projected them as having come from there, but they didn't actually pass through that point. And so we call that a virtual image. And again, the, the shortcut, or kind of the way that you can remember this, is those dashed lines represent uh, not the path that the light ray took, but where our brain thinks the light ray traveled. And so whenever you have an image that's made up from dashed lines, you know you have a virtual image. All right, so now let's look at our other type of lens, and that is our biconcave lens. And again, you'll recall from the previous uh, videos that concave lenses are diverging lenses and so they cause the rays to spread out and so obviously they're going to behave differently. So let's start off again. Uh, where's your eye going to be? If the object's on the left, your eye is going to be on the right because it is going to actually pass through the lens. And let's put our object outside the focal length first. All right? And then think of the first principal ray. It's going to travel parallel in it's going to hit the lens, but now this time, is it going to go down and through the focal point on the right? No, because it's a concave lens, it's going to diverge, and so it's going to spread up. Again, watch the video on lenses if you need a reminder of why it would go up. But it's going to go up in a line that's going to be lined up with the focal point on the left. Then the second ray is going to end up being parallel out on the right, so we need to... Uh, aim towards the focal point. Well, which one are we going to aim for? We're going to aim for the one on the right. So I'm drawing a line that's aiming towards the focal point on the right, F prime, and then it straightens out and travels parallel. And then, of course, the third one, the center, if I go through the center, it goes straight through. Now, once again, do these three rays intersect on the side where my eye is? And the answer is no. And so my brain traces back to where they appear to come from, this one looks like it came from that focal point, like we said a second ago. This one looks like it was parallel the whole time. And then center, right, is already there. And so notice, do those three rays intersect? Yes, they do. They intersect right there. And this is why when you're looking at a uh, biconcave lens at an object that's outside the focal length, you'll see an upright, reduced real or virtual? Well, we see one of the rays actually pass through there, but the intersection is caused by two that are dashed lines, and so that reminds me that it's a virtual image. 
So again, the light rays didn't actually intersect, but my brain traces them back from where they came from, and there was an intersection, and that's what creates what we call a virtual image. All right, so what if we move the object inside the focal length on a biconcave lens? Well, again, eye on the right, object inside the focal length. The first principal ray parallel in, again, is going to bend up as if it came from the focal point on the left side. The second one, we're going to aim towards the focal point on the right side, and then it's, as a result, going to bend to where it's parallel. Because again, if you trace it from right to left, parallel into the lens would spread up in a point that lined up with the focal point on the right. And then the center. And once again, do these intersect? No, uh, but our brain projects backwards. And those three do appear to intersect there. And again, we're going to see a reduced upright virtual image. All right, so that's lenses. But what about mirrors? Uh, so convex mirrors, uh, remember, are going to be, uh, in this case, curve, the curved surface is going to face the object. Right? This is like when you held the spoon with the soup holding part away from you. Um, and so the curved surface juts out towards you. Uh, I'm going to put the object on the left, but notice these are mirrors. And so which side does my eye need to be on? My eye needs to be on the left. Right, because the light's going to bounce back. And so this time, we put our eye on the left, that's where we're going to see it. And then notice, I've labeled the focal length, which is, in this case, two centimeters. I wanted to make sure it could fit on the, tape, on the page. And then I've noticed, I, I've labeled another uh, distance here, and that's the center of the mirror. In other words, the center of curvature of the circle that the surface of the mirror forms. And again, in our previous video, we learned that that's going to be um, double the focal length. In other words, that the focal length is half the radius of curvature. And so that's why uh, the focal point is halfway between the lens itself and the center of curvature of the mirror. And we're going to use both of those. And so I labeled it. And notice also I don't have two focal points this time because there's only uh, one side uh, to the mirror that the light's going to bounce off of. It's not going to pass through the back side of the mirror. All right, so let's put our object out here, and let's draw our principal rays. Parallel in, and notice when it hits this convex mirror, because of the curve of the mirror, is it going to reflect up or down? It's going to reflect up, and it's going to reflect up in a line as if it had passed through or as if it was coming from the focal point, right? Because parallel rays either converge or diverge to or from the focal point. Then the second ray, I'm going to draw aiming towards the focal point because then it will reflect back out parallel. Because again, if you drew it backwards, parallel in would bounce off and go up in a line lined up with the focal point. And then this is the one that's a little different. For mirrors, center is not uh, through the center of the mirror itself, but it's aimed at the center of curvature, or the center of the mirror's circle. And if I aim towards the center of the mirror, I'm going to bounce straight back. Uh, remember, if you aim towards the center, then you're heading uh, towards a radius, and so you're going to hit the surface perpendicular, and because of the law of reflection, you'll bounce straight back uh, when you do that. And here's our three rays. Now, do these three rays intersect? No, they don't. Uh, on the side where our eye is, they're not going to ever intersect, but it traces it back and says, hey, that one looked like it came from the focal point. That one looks like it came from the center. That one looks like it was always parallel. And those three intersected right there. And notice we get an object, or excuse me, an image that is reduced, upright, and virtual because the light rays didn't actually pass through that point. And then also notice that no matter where I placed this, we get the same result. So it doesn't matter if it's inside or outside the focal length for a convex mirror. This is why when you did the activity when you first were introduced to convex mirrors, no matter how far away you held the spoon, you always looked smaller uh, than your actual self, uh, and um, you were always upright.
All right, but what about a concave mirror? A concave mirror bends in, and so the uh, curvature is on the left, and so the, it's going to cause rays to converge on the left side, and there's our center of curvature, which again is still on the left. But because it's a mirror, our eye is going to be on the left, because it's got to be on the same side as the object. You can't see through the mirror. And if I place the object outside the focal length on a concave mirror, let's trace the paths and see what kind of image we get. We have a parallel in ray, which is going to bounce up or down. Well, it's going to be down because this is a concave mirror. It's going to cause the rays to converge at the focal point. And so it's going to come down and pass through the focal point. Well, the reverse of that, the uh, parallel out ray would then pass through the focal point so that it, when it reflects, it reflects out in a parallel direction. And then the third one is the center of curvature. So I draw an, a ray that passes through the center of curvature. And it would, if the mirror was long enough, it would bounce straight back. But notice we don't care um, because it still locates the image in the same place, which is where the other two rays intersected. And that's right here. And notice, what do you get? You get a reduced, inverted, real image. And this is when you held, um, when you either stood way back from your makeup mirror or when you held uh, the spoon uh, soup side facing towards you, um, you saw an upside down, smaller version of yourself. All right, some of you couldn't get far enough away from your makeup mirror and so you didn't see that. Uh, you're actually standing inside the focal length and that's why you're gonna see uh, what the next one uh, shows. But a lot of us, if we put the mirror down and backed up, we got to see ourselves uh, inverted and reduced. All right, and then finally, uh, let's put inside the focal length of a concave mirror, parallel out, excuse me, parallel in, is going to hit the surface and it's going to come down through the focal length, right? Because it's going to converge at the focal length. And again, it's a little trickier, but uh, in order for it to be parallel out, it would have looked like it came from the focal length. And then that would cause it to reflect out parallel. And then the center is going to bounce off the mirror uh, and go straight through the center. And again, those don't actually intersect, but my brain traces them back from where they appeared to come from. And it says that one looks like it came from there uh, in a line with the focal point. This one looks like it just traveled parallel the whole time. And then this one looks like it came from a point that lines up with the center of curvature. And those all three intersect right there. And notice that that object, or excuse me, that image is, of course, enlarged. It is upright. And is it real or virtual? It's virtual because the light rays didn't actually intersect at that point. And this is how you normally use a makeup mirror, right? Uh, you get your face inside the focal length of the mirror. And as a result, you see this uh, very enlarged version of your face. Uh, it is upright. Uh, and it is virtual because the light rays didn't actually intersect on the opposite side of the mirror. So uh, review these, uh, practice drawing the principal rays, uh, remember the trucker's maxim, and uh, you'll be able to predict where the image will be for various uh, uh, optics instruments.